So, you've decided to join the dark side, and by dark side I mean the glorious open source world of Linux. And yes, by the end of this video you'll go from accidentally typing this to flexing your terminal skills like Mr. Robot. So, let's dive in. Part 1. Why Linux and why you should care. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Why Linux? Well, imagine an OS that's free, open source, and doesn't spy on you while you binge watch Instagram reels. Linux powers 90% of the internet, including giants like Google and Facebook, because it's rock solid for servers. But it's not just for nerds. It's on your Android phone, your smart fridge, and even the International Space Station. Plus, it's yours. Want to tweak the kernel? Go for it. Hate your desktop look? Swap it in 10 seconds, and let's be real. Typing cryptic terminal commands gives you instant hacker cred. Part two, choosing your Linux flavor. No, not the flavor you're thinking. I am talking about distros. Picking a Linux distro is like choosing a pizza topping, overwhelming until you know what you like. Ubuntu is the classic cheese. Simple, stable, perfect for beginners. Linux Mint, that's the extra garlic dip. Familiar if you're coming from Windows. And if you are feeling adventurous, try Fedora. It's cutting edge, but not too unstable. Oh, then there's Arch Linux, the build your own pizza from scratch option. I know you want my advice. I'd suggest to start with Ubuntu or Mint. Use a tool like Rufus to flash the ISO onto a USB, then test drive it in a virtual box first. No need to delete Windows yet, unless you're feeling spicy. Part 3. Learning Terminal Basics Let's talk terminals. Yes, it looks like the matrix, but trust me, it's way friendlier. You have to start with ls to list files, cd to hop between folders, and pwd to see where you're lost. And if you need admin powers, sudo is your golden ticket. Like sudo apt install Firefox to get apps. But be careful. sudo rm rf slash is the digital equivalent of inviting Godzilla to Tokyo. And remember, tab auto completes commands, control plus c kills anything, and history saves your bacon. Oh, and sudo double exclamation mark reruns the last command with admin rights, because sometimes you forget to say please. Part 4. File System Hierarchy Linux organizes files like a meticulous librarian. Your personal stuff lives in home slash your name photos, docs that fanfic your writing. System-wide settings? Those are in slash etc. like the OS's brain. VAR stores logs and databases. Boring but critical and slash TMP is the digital junkyard. Files here vanish on reboot. Fun fact, even hardware like your webcam is represented as a file in slash dev. So yeah, Linux is literally all about files. Part five, permissions. Don't get locked out. Linux takes security seriously. Every file has permissions. Read, write, and execute for you, your group, or others. Run ls-l and you'll see something like dash rwxrr. The first means it's a file not a folder. The next three letters, R, W, X, are your rights. The next three are your groups, then everyone else's. To change permissions, use this that gives you full access. Others read, I execute. And here's the numbers game. Four equals red, two equals right, one equals execute. Add them up, but never do schmod 777 globally, unless you want hackers throwing a rave in your system. And Chown changes file ownership. And yes, you're basically the digital landlord now. Part 6. Customization. Make it yours Linux is the ultimate DIY OS. Hate your desktop? Swap it. GNOME is sleek, KDE is flashy, and XFCE is lightweight. Install Conky for slick desktop widgets or OMIZSH oh for a terminal that looks like a retro game. Edit your .bash RC file to add aliases. Use NeoFetch to show off your specs and style. And I know you love dark mode, for that every app obeys your theme. You can even make your terminal prompt display memes or Star Wars quotes. Back up your configs with Git, and if you mess something up, Git Restore saves the day. Linux isn't just an OS, it's a personality trait. Part 7. Level up with scripting and SSH. Alright, it's time to turn you from a terminal tourist into a full-blown automation wizard. Imagine this. Instead of typing the same commands every day, you write a magic spell, okay, a script, that does it all for you. Like a playlist for your chores. Now, for the James Bond part, SSH. It lets you control other computers remotely. Like hacking into your roommate's laptop to turn their volume down at 3 a.m. For legal reasons, that's a joke, mostly. And instead of typing passwords forever, set up a secret handshake SSH keys between devices. Finally, automate tasks to run hourly, daily, or every time you say, I'm bored. Linux's version of a robot butler. You're not just using Linux now, you're conducting a symphony of chaos. 